Dishbrain is a closed loop system which connects a neuronal network in a petri dish with an in silico world in a computer which allows the neurons and the computer to communicate through the shared language of electricity. Our brain is the most advanced information processing system in the whole universe. Over 300 million years of evolution made it flexible, inventive and energy efficient. Researchers are now harnessing this legacy to build computers out of lab-grown human neurons. This is DishBrain. I'm Anjali. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the Wellcome Center for Neuroimaging. Our interests are in computational neuroscience. I also have an interest in neurobiology and have worked on combining those two. This was also what we were doing in, in Dish Brain, where we were trying to connect our understanding of in vitro neurobiology and also the sort of computational mechanisms of how brains learn. In 2022, Brad Kagan's team at Cortical Labs supported by several universities, succeeded in building an in vitro network of 800,000 neurons, connecting them with electrical circuits. This allowed to establish a direct communication channel between the system and a computer. These are actual neurons that are grown in a dish, in a petri dish. We have neurons that are grown from humans and from rodents, from mice. From humans we have embryonic stem cells, but we also use a more recent development in stem cell biology where we take adult uh, human cells and these can be uh, reprogrammed, so basically unaged to get to the initial stem cell stage. From there we can um, develop them or direct their development um, just like the development of a child, such that they become neurons in a dish. Those were the neurons that we used that we grew in, in plates on a multi-electrode array, which is a dish which ha essentially has a chip with a bunch of electrodes underneath it, and that's what allows the um, electrical activity to be read out from the neurons to communicate with the computer, and for the electrical activity from the computer to stimulate the neurons. So that creates this sort of closed loop system where the neurons in the dish are having a conversation with the in silico computer environment. By simulating the 1972 video game Pong, the computer built a virtual reality for neurons to live in, a world they could perceive, but also act upon. The computer was modeling a, a game of ping pong or a game of pong and certain key things that you would have seen if you had eyes, um, some attributes or states of the world were then used to stimulate little patches of this uh, neural network, very much in the same way that, um, say, light stimulates little patches of our epithelia, say the retina um, for visual visual input. And then other electrodes or other little patches of the network we use to record electrical signals from the neural network fed back into the computer to cause things to change in the computer, namely the position of the paddle in the game of Pong. Life repels the unpredictable as it undermines its existence and replication. In fact, when presented with random electrical noise, Neurons adapt to avoid it. It is by exploiting this feature that researchers taught them Pong. The hypothesis was that one could encourage this kind of behavior, not by rewarding the neural network when it hit the ball, because there's no way that you know where to stimulate it to reward it. It doesn't have a pleasure center. Um, but what you can do is every time it doesn't hit the ball, present it with white noise, something that's inherently um, unpredictable, and enable it to now learn how to not elicit a, an unpredictable input. Not only did the neurons become skilled Pong players, but they did so with an ease and speed far beyond all expectations. They actually learned to play the game um, in a surprisingly short period of time. Um, they, they began to fire in that non-random way within about five minutes, which is significantly faster um, learning than we would see with traditional in silico AI. This project paves the way for a deeper understanding 
of the human brain and for building a computer that mimics its efficiency. Laying the foundations for synthetic biological intelligence as an alternative to our traditional in silico artificial intelligence which we've been developing so far, we address the energy uh, expenditure of artificial intelligence because that has really gone through the roof and it is actually a significant environmental concern. By offering the opportunity to operate on individual neurons, this brain provides a playground for testing new drugs and studying neurodegenerative diseases. Currently in DishBrain we've grown cells that are healthy, but if we were to grow cells that have a particular genetic mutation, so if we were to do some genetic engineering, for example, we can uh, compare those neurons um, that have, say, a mutation that you would see in Alzheimer's disease quite often with healthy uh, human neurons and see how their behavior is different, then that might tell us something quite interesting about what happens in Alzheimer's disease. DishBrain has the potential to transform medicine, neurobiology, and computer science. It is a truly mind-bending breakthrough.